Ladies and gentlemen, Black Hatter. I like it. I haven't even tasted it yet. Welcome back to the happy hour, guys, and welcome back to a tradition that goes back to 2008. Looking back on all the places we've been in the past 12 months, 2013 was another bang-up year. And in support of that, with this year-end episode, we're going to give you even more of what you want. We started a documentary series this year called Beer Entrepreneurs, in which we ask questions of people out there that we feel are really movers and shakers in the craft beer industry. We asked the same questions to everyone, and we got a variety of really cool answers. We'll begin this retrospective where we began the new year, in our home city of New York. So let's get started. Here's a look back at 2013 and Beer Heroes. Welcome to our ongoing series. And I left that open because we haven't titled it yet, but I'd like to call it Beer Entrepreneurs. Mark, I'm going to hand the microphone over to you and we'll ask the first of our many questions. Here we go. All right, so uh, let's talk about who your who your your heroes are in the beer industry. I think uh, akin to music, they're all dead. So M Michael Jackson at the first and foremost because uh, his his writing his writing style was really just so approachable for everybody, regardless of your actual interest in the product. Uh, however, you know the, the the depth of knowledge was was always present. Uh, so every Michael Jackson book, be it any of the beer books or the whiskey book or any of it, you want to have every page of it soak into your brain. Yeah. So the only way to do that, obviously, is to drink a good ton of beer. So he, there's he that. Kinda, he, he opened it up for everybody. I mean, he, he really did. He opened it up. He kind of made the conversation start for so many people. So he started from a bar level and took it from there. Like, he wanted input. Like, he spoke to, he spoke to people. He didn't speak to, like, you know, this generation of of beer snobs. Beer snobs aren't happy people. They, they look down on everybody. Like, you know, beer geeks is one thing. Beer, snob, beer snobs are ignorant people. They should not be in bars. They should be put in a corner somewhere. Beer is about sharing. Sharing your experience. I never ever open a good bottle unless on my own, unless I'm surrounded by good people that want to share this and talk about this beer. Beer snobs, to me, piss me off. I don't want to see them. I want to share my beer. I want to talk good about it. I want to introduce other people that don't know about this beer to this beer. It's the most important thing for, for craft beer in America right now is to share that experience and let people know about it. Um, and what Corey was saying, Michael Jackson is the guy that started this up with, with just culture and bar culture and, and appreciating good beer. And that's what's most important to everybody. And you know what? It's beer. It's way better than what it used to be. It's amazing right now. And it's like, it's, it's, I love the passion of it. It gets me excited. And I... Uh, I just want like everybody to share this, and that's why I try to, to do what I do in New York to to introduce new beer to new people and, and get them to experience what I've experienced because it, it's exciting and I love it. There's definitely love and skill in equal measure in craft beer, and every brewer has their heroes, as we found out at Single Cut in Astoria, Queens. This is one of my favorite parts of every brewery. Every brewery has their own little stash of things that they love uh, that aren't even that not necessarily their beers, but well, I'll have to highlight Hetty Topper. Which I'll go on record as saying is, in my opinion, the best American beer and one of the best worldwide beers. I don't think it gets any better for an Imperial IPA. Present companies, I, <laughs> Imperial IPA excluded, of course, but that's a phenomenal beer. See, and this is another part of the brewing community that we love so much, is it's a community. You're not, you're not shy or afraid to throw you know, accolades and compliments to each other, you know, you're all in it together. Yeah, absolutely. And hey, credit where credit's due. These guys are amazing brewers. They're making fantastic beer. And I, you know, my, I, I only aspire to be brewing stuff on their level. So it's, uh, they've certainly influenced me to a great degree. My, my hero, uh, I guess, as I cut my teeth as a brewer has always been Sierra Nevada. I think that Sierra Nevada is a great brewery. Um, they, they've never misstepped. Uh, they do everything to the nth degree of quality, uh, regardless of the scale that they've, they've taken on. The beer has never sacrificed, they've never cut any corners, and I think Torpedo is one of the best IPAs out there. It's a great beer. As far as who are my heroes today, um, they, that's easy again for me to answer. Uh, it's a couple of the great breweries in Vermont. I think they're making the best beer in the United States right now. Um, Alchemist and Hill Farmstead. But all the rules are going out the window. Like right. everybody, oh no, you can't use dry yeast. Oh no, you can't fill yeast. Yes, you can. You can do whatever you want. Uh, and and America is leading the way in that. You know, We're, you're not you're not beholden to to the way styles have always 
been, and you don't you can you can experiment, you can innovate. I, I've always said that uh, the U.S. of A. is the best beer producing country in the world. You know, we're not. You're you're absolutely right. We're not beholden to any you know 500 year tradition of doing X, Y, and Z. Um, we're doing whatever we want. As long as the results are great, then it's all it's all good. So in Astoria, heroes because of innovation. But at Idle Hands Bar, maybe just a little closer to home. Uh, honestly, my beer icon would be my dad. Really, yeah. uh, my dad didn't know that much about beer, and like he didn't he didn't uh, give me any education. He didn't like teach me about anything. But he had this passion for it that like he liked being drunk. He, come on, <laughs> that's fine. But he, like my dad basically was stationed in Germany in the, in the force. Oh wow! And this was in like the fifties and sixties, and so original. craft beer kind of didn't yeah. exist then. But he went to Germany and was like, oh my god, you know, I've been drinking Jenny Light. <laughs> You know, since I was 16, Pennsylvania, this is terrible. Like, here's all these great beers like Marzins and Vices. And, like, he came home and he couldn't get that. So he's always on a search to, like, find cool beer uh, or better beer. And so that had, like, a huge influence on me. Other than that, when I went to college, I went to school Michigan State, Lansing, Michigan. Uh-huh. I started to get, like, going into bars. And they would have, like, Red Dog, Ice House, Miller, Labatt, <laughs> Coors. And I would try them and I'd literally be like... Oh God! Why do people like this? I don't understand. Like, what? What is the attraction? Uh, and so I started homebrewing. I was like, "There's, there's got to be a way," because we weren't getting sold a lot of craft beer at that point. So I was like, well, "I'm gonna go find out how to make it." And so uh, I had a friend who bought a, a uh, who bought a, a, a beer making kit, and that was our Saturday afternoon exploit. We, bunch of us would go to his house and we would brew beer every Saturday. And like, oh, what do you want to make? I don't know. What's a nut brown ale? I don't know. We can't find it in Michigan. Let's just make one. So it'd probably be my dad and then Jason Jones who bought the first beer kit. So, huh, that's cool. was there a particular brewery uh, coming up or a, a particular brewer, in, maybe in the last 10, 20 years that was really like, wow, that person's changing the game? Uh, Larry Bell, Bell's from Michigan. Yeah, I mean, that yeah. that was like the first time that craft beer penetrated the bars I was hanging out. Uh, but Bell's, Bell's was the first craft brewery where they like, I was like, oh, finally a beer. This is good. This is deli- like more of this. Definitely Larry Bell. Does anybody know where Shorts Brewing is? 2013 also brought another first for us, the opportunity to headline a month-long craft beer and burger tour, courtesy of our friends at Bagger Dave's legendary Burger Tavern. Over the course of four weeks, we shot at 10 breweries and hosted 10 events at Bagger Dave's stores in Michigan and Indiana, and it was awesome. Here's a montage of some of the places we visited and some of the events we threw. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to downtown Detroit. This is Rebecca Raver, the Vice President for Marketing for Diversified Restaurant Holdings. Did I get that right? You did. Look at that. Yay! And we are journeying into the future. This is something that hasn't even happened yet, and yet we're we're here. We're already there. This is going to give you a great idea of what this location is going to be carrying in terms of local craft beer. Let's have a look. Do it like you mean it. There you go. So, cheers, everyone. Cheers. Drink well. To Dirty Water Beer. Drink well. Drink well, do good. This year was one of those where we had the hops to do exactly what we did and the public just made it up. They're sort of taking things you already know and putting them into the stratosphere and also introducing things you might never have heard of before. Making it vivant. And making it vivant. I love that. That's what what we're doing. If you could smell what we could smell, you'd be as happy as we are. I've said it before, I'll say it again. It's like having a three-year-old. A really big three-year-old. It's all about you know kicking ass and taking names. Yeah, you know, we yeah. we make we want to make the best beer on planet Earth and and get it to the people. So, what's the trivia about Berkeley in the in the Berkeley script? Fred it's Goldstein the invented the curveball in 1870. Oh right! What was your revelation just now? Even the lettuce tastes better after drinking the beer. It's alive. Beer is a living thing. You need to know that beer is a living, breathing, spitting thing. We would be remiss without saying thank you, first of all, for Bagger Dave's hosting tonight. So I'm just going to go ahead and drink this beer because it's really pretty. And sharing all of their amazing beers with everyone tonight. So, And of course, thank you, Sun King. Yes, Sun King Brewery. Another one of our favorite stops this year was hanging out with the good folks of Barrier Brewing at Oceanside, New York. We were there to talk about them getting back up from basically a knockout punch from Hurricane Sandy, but we learned a whole lot about their heroes as well. 
Who were, who were the people that you looked up to in the brewing industry that were doing things that you respected and maybe wanted to emulate or at least took, you took inspiration from? Well, I'll have to say that the very first craft beer that I ever had was uh, Magic Hat, Fat Angel. And I was actually, uh, it was my first fish tour that I was participating in in high school. Why do I feel like there are a lot of brewers that have similar stories? <laughs> And, uh, you know, if you've ever been a part of this, this scene, you know, you go to the shows several hours before to kind of take it all in, to meet people, to mingle, and everyone's kind of selling their goods. There's a, there's a whole little market there of people selling crafts and food, um, including craft beers. And this guy approached us saying he had this really cool micro brew from Vermont and wanted to know if we were interested in a bottle. He was selling it one for three bucks or two for five. So we, you know, we jumped on the bargain. Uh, we just cracked open a beer, and I had never tasted, I thought I knew beer. Um, this thing was just like an explosion of bitterness and maltiness. At the time, I didn't even really know how to articulate those flavors because I had never tasted them before. Um, but that was kind of it. That was That's what sparked me into really kind of getting into the flavor profiles of beer and, and what they had to offer. Uh, if you fast forward probably about like six years or so, um, in college, I studied abroad in London. And I lived there for a year, and I got into the real ales, the cask beers, and going to the pubs, and just kind of part of that pub ritual of going there after work, drinking these low ABV beers, purely for the flavor and for the social aspect of talking and, and hanging out, not in any way to get drunk, because you know you need to drink 20 of those things to do that. Um, you get a whiskey or something like that if that's what you're going for. So. Um, again, that kind of got me, kind of reminded me about this whole concept of like appreciating be beers for the craft, the flavor, the passion that goes into it. So when I came back from there, that's when I jumped into home brewing. So who was doing stuff that, that really, really just sort of caught your imagination? Well, I think similar to Craig, like some of the first craft beers I had weren't necessarily beers that were, well, it was when I went away to college, like 98, 99, started drinking some Saranac beers because I went up to school. Up, up, College uh, in Plattsburgh, so that was a you know a local microbrew up there, uh, you know, and then it kind of just I started getting some Lake Placid beers, and then uh, started having some experience with Stone Brewing, and uh, probably this like the Ruination, some of their really hoppy beers, yeah. flavors I've never had before. Those were the beers that then kind of propelled me to start home brewing. I had a friend that went to Hawaii on his honeymoon. He came back, and uh, I think it was like 2006. Went to uh, Kona Brewing, went on a tour, fell in love with the whole, you know, the, the, fell in love with the brewery. He came back, and I guess one of the tour guides was talking about homebrew kits, so he said, We got to order this kit. So we did. We started making beer, and they came out relatively good. You could drink them, they weren't, you know, right, right. severely contaminated. Um, and the cool thing, you know, you get, and you caught a buzz, and it was, it was just really, a cool process that you could that you could make this this liquid and then you know right. obviously not the first ones to discover this but uh, I just fell in love with it you know so then we started developing my own uh, you know our own recipes fine tuning them and then uh, it's actually where I met both of these guys at a, a Six Point Brewery we all worked there together everyone there was was a home brewer that was like part of the prerequisite for getting a job there. Um, and uh, you know we'd bring our home brews in. Everyone would taste them. You know, give their advice, input. Uh, so kind of we all were just in addition to working on a commercial level, which is we all feel is invaluable to uh, you know starting your own brewery. Um, you know, we would all just have we were all home brewing as well and experimenting and fine tuning recipes. And so uh, at the same time, formulating a business plan to get this place up and going. What I want to ask is, do you do you what is the most underappreciated? beer style out there. I'll give you a minute to think of your answer. Maybe it's a beer style that you really want to brew, uh, but the most underappreciated beer style out there, I'm gonna go one, two, three, and you all say it at the same time. Let's see if it's the same style. Be really interested, ready? One, two, what? Still thinking? You got it? All right, ready? One, two, three. <laughs> hey, ESP. ESP. <laughs> All right. So uh, that's actually, I think, a really, really good thing because that means that everybody's got stuff they want to work on here, which means more recipes, more yeah. beers coming. See, and that's that's you can always tell when when brewers are are creators when the, you know when they're using their imagination and they're finding inspiration in other places because, and that's what we taste in your beer every time is that somebody had an idea and it made it all the way into the glass. 
So the, the, that's the kind of brewery that we find inspiring. We could never do what you guys do. We wish we could, but we can appreciate it. And we appreciate it whenever we possibly can. You know, people often ask us, why don't you guys brew? And we feel that that's basically akin to saying, you appreciate guitar music. Why don't you pick up a guitar and play it like a virtuoso? The truth is, brewing is an art form as much as it is science. And another place where they are pushing the boundaries of that art form, Sun King Brewing in Indianapolis, Indiana. Here's one of their founders, Clay Robinson. His hero story has to do with a chance meeting of a guy who happened to become his business partner. Right as I was getting out of college, I had fallen in love with craft beer, and I used to get kegs for parties from Circle B Brewing Company, which right. was on the north side of Indianapolis. Right. And the guy who would help me load kegs into the car um, is now my partner, Dave Cole. <laughs> um, so, so I would get kegs, he would help me load them in, and a couple years after college, I started brewing downtown at Rock Bottom, Indianapolis. Right. About a year or so into that, the Ram downtown opened, and I went to meet the brewers, and the assistant brewer was that same guy who used to load kegs in my car. <laughs> and we had this, uh, like, aha, like, you look familiar. Yeah, you. So we went back and forth, and we became fast friends, and would drink beer at the end of a uh, work week together. And from 2005 to 2008, we ran the Ram Brewery together. And during that time, we started a conversation, which was, what would you do if you could open your own brewery? And the long and the short of the three-plus years of planning and then the year that took me to write the business plan, get investment, and just get open, the long and the short answer is... <laughs> Here it is. Ta-da! For some brewers, it's about where they started brewing and how the region might have an influence on their taste in beer. Case in point, Chief O'Neill, Peak Skill Brewing. I started brewing in the, in the Bay Area uh, in the late 90s. Um, the first brewery I ever worked at was the 20 Tank in, in San Francisco. Uh, I worked in the kitchen there and they let us play around clean lines for them, basically, <laughs> doing manual labor. Um, from there, I worked at uh, the Gordon Biersch uh, Production Brewery in mm -hmm. San Jose, okay. and then I worked at uh, Jupiter and Drake's uh, in the East Bay, which were, um, Drake's was uh, one of the first Bay Area craft breweries. Huh. Um, it was originally known as Lynn Brewing, um, and then in 2002, my wife and I moved from the Bay Area to uh, Ithaca, okay. and I worked at Ithaca Beer for nine years, yeah. um, and then we moved down here. Uh, we moved here about a year ago. Sometimes a region affects a brewery in a totally different way. This is Brewery Vivant in Grand Rapids, Michigan. It all begins with a trip, right? So uh, I always love the Belgium styles of beer. It's a very like mysterious uh, beer. As much as you have beer knowledge, there's still something mysterious about how all that comes together. Yeah. It's really it's all about the yeast character of beer. Yep. And uh, a trip over to Europe, we visited all, my wife and I went there, we visited all these little small countryside breweries in Belgium and France. Uh -huh. All, you know, none of them that anyone's ever heard of before. People drink the beer in this one village, you go two villages over, they've never heard of the brewery you just drank from. Because <laughs> they all uh, focus on those. But they're all these wonderful, very uh, characteristic, uh, kind of rustic, we call them farmhouse beers. You know, a lot of times they're unfiltered. There's uh, sometimes sour characters uh, to the beers, uh, but we fell in love with them and that's what we wanted to do uh, when we came back here. Another amazing facet of the craft beer industry is how it really crosses all barriers, as we found out at Union Craft Brewing in Baltimore, Maryland. You know, the beer that brought me into craft beer was uh, Pete's Wicked uh, Winter Ale. Whoa. Yeah, so I love the Winter Ale. Um, so that, that's a beer that's like, you know, near to my heart, but pretty much I like drinking any kind of beer. Uh, you know, there's a, there's always a perfect time for, for some sort of beer, you know, whether it be a Kolsch after cutting the glass or a stout in the middle of winter um, or a stout in the middle of summer. Um, you know, so I, there's there's no real favorite beer of mine. I just really like whatever I can get my hands on and drink. John and I are both doing a play at Center Stage right now that has to do with race. And you know what? There aren't a lot of black brewers out there. What's that like for you? Well, you know, what's, what's funny, though, is that, like, the authoritative brewer in America that most people turn to for stuff is, is Garrett Oliver. Yeah. You know, um, so uh, there's Garrett Oliver, there's Mustafa, uh, Michael Ferguson out in California for BJ's. So we're, we're here, we're, we're around, you know, but uh, there aren't, but there'll, there'll be more, I think, as craft beer becomes more diverse. Yeah. Um, craft beer is, for the most part, is very colorblind, and that's a good thing, and it's also a bad thing. Um, so, you know, I, nobody refers to Garrett Oliver as a black brewery, it's just Garrett Oliver, exactly. you know, but at the same point, there's no, there's not much advertising in craft beer. There's not much reach out. So it's all kind of word of mouth. And since the majority of the of the craft brewers and craft beer owners are white, there's not much reach out to other groups. So I think yeah. that's an advantage we have here. You know, when I said when I open my own brewery, we're going to reach out to different neighborhoods and, and and to different populations. So that's something I've, we've tried to do. You know? 
So I guess a perfect way to end this episode would be to talk about our heroes. Truth is, anyone who works in the craft industry is a hero to us because brewers make great neighbors. And all the folks that we featured in this episode, we have incredible and deep respect for. But none put it quite as succinctly as John Kimmick at the Alchemist Brewery in Waterbury, Vermont. So here's a little wisdom from John, and here's to 2014. We'll see you guys next time. Cheers. You gotta be, you gotta be a good human being to begin with. You know, I mean, there's a lot of degenerates in the world, and there's a lot of people that really, really think only of themselves, whether they fool themselves into thinking otherwise. And you know, I mean, that that kind of that's like deep shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you start thinking about but it's basic who you are too, as a yeah. human and what you want to leave behind, yeah. you know? Do you want to just be anonymous and squeak through and leave nothing behind, or do you want to have some sort of greater impact? You know, not going to change the world, but boy, if you can make an amazing change in an employee's life that's been popping around job to job, and all of a sudden you have created a job that they take pride in and have fun at and can see themselves doing till they retire. You know, I mean, what better thing? I mean, Jen and I have found our passion in life and have gone after it and have achieved so much with it. How can you spread that around? You know, how can yeah. you give that feeling to other people? Because so many people are like, oh, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what I want to be. You try all different things, and a lot of people never find their niche, you know? So if we can help them find a niche and make that niche for them, I mean, that's a very satisfying thing for sure. New Holland Brewing. We're on campus. We are. Time to go back to beer school. It is. Oh, here comes the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Cut. Print. Print. We're done here. We're done here. <sighs>